Just look at Clarence Thomas, whose corruption is almost comical. Secret trips to retreats, international vacations on super yachts, and private jet jaunts to New Haven for an afternoon. Here in Congress, we are forbidden from receiving gifts that exceed $50. But Justice Thomas has received more than $4 million in gifts, largely undisclosed, since joining the court. And worse, it appears to be working. He is currently primed to overturn his own 2005 doctrine so he can side with Charles Koch's network and their oil and gas interests, the same Charles Koch who, secret, who he secretly vacationed with at the retreat. Or take Justice Alito, whose quote-unquote friendship with billionaire Paul Singer, along with more undisclosed gifts and private jet trips, jet trips was followed by a shift in the court's decision to take up Singer's own case. Coincidentally, after Justice Alito took an unreported fishing trip to Alaska with Singer, the Supreme Court reversed their position and took up his case, ultimately leading Singer to a victory netting $2.4 billion. This was not a bad return on Singer's $80 million in political donations, a fishing trip, and a couple bottles of $1,000 wine. And of course, in 2022, these billionaires and their hand-picked justices won their keystone victory against the American people and their progress as a society. They overturned Roe v. Wade. So why was it abortion? Why was the threat of women having freedom powerful enough to bring down our whole system of judicial ethics and cripple one of the three co-equal branches of government? That is because these rich and powerful men are in an existential fight for a status quo that enshrines their power and places them above, above the American public in the rules. The confluence of money and conservatism is no coincidence, and we are here today to connect the dots. The group behind the Dobbs Challenge was, predictably, funded by who else but Leonard Leo. Should the mother at that juncture have the right, clearly a viable child, to, to uh, uh, abort the child. My example's not unrealistic. I think that every... If, you're, if, you're, if your answer, I'm going to save my time, if your answer is going to be that never happens, let me go to Ms. Fry. What do you think? Well, Senator, first of all, if you don't ask a question, if you don't want to know the answer. And I think one... Well, I'm what, but, but I'm saying to you, Senator, 1%, 1% of abortions happen at 21 weeks or later. Mm -hmm. So I think the premise of your question sets up a conversation about abortion that is unfair. It is rarely is that ever the instance. Most, the vast majority of pregnancies and abortions that are considered late in a pregnancy have to do with severe, devastating, medical circumstances. And I understand your point, Senator. I understand your point. But with all due respect, I also think the chances of people sort of getting all the way through a pregnancy and just sort of saying, I don't want it, is disrespectful to women. You know, I think uh, one of the major takeaways and what is important about uh, so much of what we've discussed today is that the Supreme Court is a stone's throw away from this building. They are nine justices that wear robes, but they are not gods, nor are they priests. And this idea that their authority is self-generated and that they are accountable to no one or nothing is, com is not just wrong. It is one of the most direct and dire threats to American democracy today, because any degree of authority without accountability is a seed of tyranny, and it is a seed of authoritarianism. And we are seeing that play out today in the stripping of, of rights and bodily autonomy of women and people across the country, in the stripping of labor rights and labor movements of people across the country, in people's right to drink clean water and breathe clean air. The, the constitutional and democratic crisis and threat that this current corruption uh, crisis on the court presents is a threat not just to American way of life and American democracy, but it is a threat to our lives. People have died and are dying after the Dobbs decision.
People have died and can die with the, with the rollbacks of environmental provisions. We've seen this in, in the dumping of PFAS and, 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 and toxic waste throughout the United States. These are our lives on the, on the line. And the corruption crisis presented by the court is not just an offense to our democracy. It is not just an offense to our morals. This is about people's lives on the line and who are being sacrificed for greed and for what? And so I think the takeaway for us today is that the responsibility of this harm is not just solely on the court. It relies in Congress. It lies in Congress because it is not just when an individual seeks to abuse their power where our democracy fails. It is, when, it is when there is a lack of accountability and standing up and response to an attempt at tyranny that our democracy fails. That is why it is important that we had accountability after January 6th in an attempted insurrection and, and uh, involvement to overturn the, United States, the, the results of the United States presidential election. And it's why we need to have truly important, sweeping, and strong response to the, to the crisis of corruption on the highest court of this land. Hey everyone, it's Rep AOC, and today I want to talk to you about an issue that's actually pretty serious, and that is the absolute explosion in non-consensual AI-generated deepfake pornography that has happened in the last couple years. And I also want to talk to you about what we're doing about it. I want to give you some background so that we understand how bad this situation actually is right now. Since the, the public release of AI tools, out of all the images and video that AI has generated, over 90 to 95% of it has been non-consensual deep fake pornography. And over 90% of that is targeting women. I want you to think about how crazy that is. Over 90% of all the images and video that's being developed by AI right now is sexually exploitative and non-consensual and targeting women. This is sexual violence. As a prominent um, and visible female elected official, I've been personally targeted by this, but it's not just prominent people in the limelight. What is actually concerning is the way that this is being used to target everyday people. And if you are a woman of any kind that wants to aspire to anything, starting a business, becoming a teacher, running for office, you are overwhelmingly facing the risk of being targeted uh, by this kind of reputational sexual violence uh, that is at its core exploitative. And what's even crazier is that right now, there are no federal protections for any person, regardless of your gender, if you are a victim of non-consensual deep fake pornography, none. And you might be asking yourself, why has this not been treated like the emergency that it is? Well, maybe that has something to do with the fact that Congress is over 70% male and women's issues kind of whoosh institutionally around here, but we are ending that today. Over the last couple months, I've worked behind the scenes with phenomenal colleagues in the House and the Senate from both Republican and Democratic parties to start to put an end to this, and that is known as the Defiance Act. The Defiance Act is a bipartisan piece of legislation that we currently have introduced in the House and Senate that would update the Violence Against Women Act in order to create what is known as a civil course of action for victims and survivors of non-consensual AI deepfake porn. So what does that mean? What that means is that if you are a victim or survivor of AI deepfake pornography, you will start to have federal protections where you can begin to pursue accountability in court for perpetrators of, and people who generate, perpetrate, and uh, spread this kind of imagery against you. As we get more updates on the path to potential passage of the Defiance Act, I'll make sure to keep you updated here. In the meantime, if you happen to be a person who has been a victim or survivor of this and are trying to seek out resources in what you can do, we have some information right here. And I also just wanna let you know that help is on the way and we are working every single day to make sure that this protection becomes a reality.